Uh, hi, my name is Lincoln Fishman. You're at Sawyer Farm in Worthington, Massachusetts, which is out in the western part of the state, up in the hills where we have lots of rocks. We're at 1,600 feet elevation. Um, small, relatively diverse vegetable farm. Um, we do about five acres in production. And our main sales outlets are the farm store behind us, um, also wholesale, especially with root vegetables or storage crops. And we have a CBD company where we make our own tincture. So those are kind of our three, the three legs of our financial stool. Uh, we moved here in 2010 and the total farm acreage is, is that what you want? Yeah. Is 40 acres. But uh, about half of that is in woods. So there's like 20 open acres and, and really only a few acres that are decent for vegetable production. All right. So this is the beginning and the end in a way. Uh, I mean, it's all a circle. So, but we're at a point in the circle now with bare soil. So this was in clover for four or five years and it got plowed down last year because it started to look like that. So it's kind of cool that we're standing here because you're like, this is the reset button. And that's what eventually happens to your beautiful pure stand of Dutch white clover is you get perennials moving in and it's no longer a beautiful pure stand. And so then you till. And I know there's a lot of different opinions about this. My personal opinion is that good no-till starts with tillage. It's really, really hard to move into no-till without tillage. Um, and Ann and Eric Nordell, who farm in North Central Pennsylvania, have coined the phrase that I love, which is, no-till, K-N-O-W, no-till. It's not that you don't till, it's that you know why, when, where, and how you till. You've just like been thoughtful about it. It's not like evil in and of itself. It just needs to be done with, with thoughtfulness, right? So, you know, having said that, <laughs> it's not a great thing. You know, I was going through here today, there's like dust, you know, it's, it, there's still moisture in the soil, but like, you know, I'm kicking up dust. My goal is, because I don't want to be in here weeding a million times, I stale bed this for a little bit. So I'm, I'm going to do it again. I'm just going to come through here with the harrows or the time weeder or whatever. I'm going to make sure I can kill everything I can before the crops go in. All right, so then the crops go in. And now it's July. And I'm getting up to like last cultivation where the plants won't fit under my cultivator anymore, right? Um, and so I'm not going to be able to get in there except by hand anyway anymore. So then at that point of the year, I keep a 50 pound bag of Dutch white clover and a 50 pound bag of cracked corn. The best kind of cracked corn is like for chicks because it's like a little bit of a finer crack there. Um, and whenever a crop hits that moment where I'm like, that's the last time I'm gonna be able to cultivate that crop, cultivate it. And then I broadcast in Dutch white clover. I go very heavy. You probably don't need to go so heavy, but I like to go very heavy. I'm doing, uh, about a pound per thousand square feet, which comes out to 44 pounds an acre. And how are you applying that? So I have a little chest cedar, like one of those, um, it's probably a solo, and you walk around like this. Um, so I put in, um, you measure out, it's generally, my recollection, I could be wrong about this, double check my math, is that like a quart of Dutch white clover seed is a pound and a half. Um, and I mix that with three quarts of cracked corn and stir that all around. And that works for me to do like a bed to get about a thousand square feet per pound. So I'm doing like 1500 square feet in one of my beds, um, at a time. And that's it. If you don't have to do anything after that, I think there, it would probably be great to incorporate it a little bit, to rake it if you felt like it. I, don't, you can tell my MO is like, if I, I try to figure out how little I can get, get away with. Um, one thing that does, that I do do often is if that crop wants a final hand weeding, um, or hoeing or, or hand weeding or whatever, I will broadcast first. And that way the action of somebody's feet and the hoe helps to work the clover in a little bit. And I look carefully at the weather. So when I say I keep it in my truck, it's true. Cause I want to be able to jump out there and do it whenever. But practically speaking, I'm really doing a kind of weather-based sowing of this stuff. So I want there to be some soil moisture already. And I want to see that there's some gentle moisture in the short-term forecast. 
because a this is a very small seed and it's on the surface. A thunderstorm is going to like, if, if we broadcast right here right now and we got a storm, we would have like bright lines of clover seed all in every low spot, which can work eventually, but it's not what you want. You want like nice, even coverage. Um, and on that front, I will actually say one other thing, which is last cultivation is true for most crops. Um, but there are some crops like cabbage, for example, where if you need to get in there with the clover before the cabbage is canopied completely, otherwise the clover cannot grow, obviously. So you want that getting established. So you're kind of, you know, balancing these pieces, which is last cultivation, canopy cover, weather, the fact that clover always overwinters better the earlier you get it in but that you don't want a million weeds. So you do want to have been through there a number of times and feel like you have a pretty clean bed. So you make your whole mix at the truck you have in your five gallon buckets. So you've, right? <laughs> and you've got a whole bunch mixed and ready to go. And now you know that four quarts does a row, right? right. Cause it's that one quart of seed and one quarter, or I mean, it's totally dependent on your row length. Obviously right. don't go out and start like, just being like four quarts, I guess. <laughs> but for my 450 foot rows, um, so I'm going to put eight quarts in there. This is what, this is what there's, if, if, this, if you want to keep it like light. So now you go down and back eight more down and back eight more. So the weight can stay at, you know, one end of the field and it's easy enough. To... An efficient use of time and efficient use of labor. It's, it's a great practice. It's, it's an easy system to implement. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. How wide of an area will that broadcast cedar cover in one pass? You can, it really works best on like a, you can do two beds. I've, these are five foot centers. You can do two beds and not more well. So what's that in total uh, uh, width? Uh, so 10 foot. 10 feet. So about 10 feet. Okay. With that, with that one pass. Yeah. But what I like to, here's what I actually do. And I wish I had beds laid out right now so you could see. Um, I will walk down kind of getting both of these beds, mm -hmm. but hopefully not right up to the edge. So I'm actually walking down each, this bed will get hit again. Right. On, you know, this half basically. Right. So I'm trying to do half of, so I'm actually only trying to get about five feet in each pass. Right. But you can do more if that makes sense. Okay. For whatever you're doing. But yeah, I kind of want to, I want that even coverage. And I especially want to, I want to get the most clover seed in the center of that row blasted underneath the actual cash crop so right. it can get established everywhere in the bed and not just have, if you don't do a great job, you'll have really beautiful pathways and then kind of like scattered clover throughout your bed top. Right. Tell me a little bit more about uh, broadcast seed and clover. You're using cracked corn in there. Is that just to make it, what's the purpose of the cracked corn? Yeah. So the cracked corn does two things. One is to try to cover 1,500 square feet with a quart jar of seed is not easy to try to actually get like an even spread. And you get halfway down, and you're like, I got like a, too much left, or I don't have enough left, or whatever. You can see it. It's hard to see where you've been with the clover seed. You get like a nice bright yellow cracked corn flying everywhere, and you're like, oh, that's the that's like the amount of push I should put into cranking this handle, or how fast or slow I should be going. You're really seeing a lot of material, right? Like, you know, hitting the plants and hitting the soil, and you have a good sense of like, yeah, what your broadcast, what your spray pattern looks like. Sand doesn't work well. Lime doesn't work well. I've tried a bunch of different things. I thought lime was gonna be nice because it's bright white. All those things aren't slippery enough. They tend to bridge in there, and so you have to walk down the road like this basically to get it to like settle down into the bottom of that funnel and reliably come out. So I like the crack corn i think best of all it's not like i've experimented with a million things but off the bat that's the one that i that's what i keep around why why have you gone with a broadcast cedar for for uh putting out the clover instead of a tractor mounted cedar or any other type of uh, machine so you know we are a small farm we're really only like five acres of production and it's a pretty decent mix of stuff so you know, I might have a half acre of this and a half acre of that, but even then to go pull out a piece of equipment to spray into it, um, doesn't make a ton of sense. Like I said, it's often just something that it doesn't take, you know, you're only walking back and forth a few times. It doesn't take that long. 
Um, if it was a larger scale farm, it would absolutely make sense. Or if it was this scale, but you were only growing two or three crops so that, you know, you're like, I'm going to hook it up now and, and do a couple acres. A cone spreader is the thing that everybody kind of had, you know, the most common thing around. It makes me nervous because it doesn't generally have a great spray pattern. It's not super dialed in, in terms of like full coverage within that area. And it's just hard to know what's going on behind you. The clover seed is expensive, you know, like a 50 pound bag is like 350 bucks. So like, you don't want to get to the end of that acre and find out that like, you've still got a bunch in there or you ran out, but you weren't sure when, or it was too heavy or not. So, you know, I know a lot of people are drilling, are drilling clover. I think, you know, if you have a drill with a grass box, you should absolutely do it that way. Um, I think a lot of these broadcast spreaders that are tractor mounted, I just don't trust their spray pattern enough.